Today we will start lecture 4-2 on source transformations. Source transformations is a technique to simplify a circuit in order to find voltage, current, or power in that circuit. It's similar to how we use series and parallel reductions to simplify resistor, inductor, and capacitors. A source transformation is valid when you have a voltage source in series with a resistor. When you have this configuration, you can do a source transformation to change it to a current source in parallel with a resistor. Notice that this works for independent and dependent circuits. If you have a voltage source that has a positive on top and a negative on the bottom, when you transform it to the current source, the arrowhead points in the direction of the positive terminal on the voltage source. The relationship between the voltage and the current in the source transformation is Ohm's law. So if I have a voltage source and I want to convert to a current source, then IS would be equal to VS over R. The resistance stays the same for both circuits. So now let's talk about what equivalent means. Equivalent means that if I put a voltmeter, ammeter, or ohmmeter across terminals A and B, for these two circuits, the voltage would be the same, the current would be the same, and the resistance would be the same. When you perform a source transformation, the terminal characteristics remain the same, and that means the circuits are equivalent. However, once I perform the transformation, the voltage source, the current source, and the resistor, their current voltage and power would change. So you can only say that the circuits are equivalent at the terminals A and B. Let's look at a couple of special cases. We have the bottom left circuit here is a voltage source in parallel with a resistor RP and then in series with R. RP is called a dummy resistor. It's called a dummy resistor because it does not affect the source transformation, which means I can actually remove that parallel resistor and still do the source transformation. Why does this work? Well, VS and RP are in parallel, so they have the same voltage. So whether it's there or not, the source transformation would still be IS in parallel with R, ignoring RP. There's also a dummy resistor for the current one. If you look at that bottom right circuit, RS is in series with IS. RS is called a dummy resistor. What that means is that the current is the same for RS and the current source, so it can be removed. And when I do the source transformation, RS is not part of that configuration. Let's do a couple of examples. All right, our first example. How about a 10 volt source in series with a five ohm resistor? The other thing that's very important to remember is that source transformations are valid when you have voltage sources in series with resistors and current sources in parallel with resistors. So this voltage source in series with the resistor becomes a current source in parallel with the resistor. Remember the resistor does not change, so the resistor is still five ohms. The value of the current source is found from Ohm's law. 10 divided by five means the current source is two amps. And remember, the current sor source points up because the positive on the voltage source points up. What about if we have a current source in parallel with a resistor? Let's say I have three amps in parallel with two ohms. If I do the source transformation for this one, it becomes a voltage source in series with a resistor. The resistor stays the same, so it's still two ohms. The voltage source would be three times two which is six volts. Notice that the arrowhead points down. So this voltage source would be positive on the bottom and negative on the top. Okay, let's try one with a dummy resistor. So here we have a five volt source, a two ohm resistor, and a three ohm resistor. This two ohm resistor is the dummy resistor. So the voltage would still be the same whether it was there or not. So that circuit can be written as 
a five volt source in series with the three ohm resistor. And now when I do the source transformation, I have a current source in parallel with a three ohm resistor. And what do you think the value is of that current source? Well, it's voltage divided by resistance. So it's five over three amps in parallel with three ohms. And notice the arrowhead points down. How about one more example? We'll have a current source two amps in series with a two ohm resistor in parallel with a four ohm resistor. Once again, the two ohm resistor has the same current as the current source, so the two ohm resistor is a dummy resistor. So this can be written as two amps in parallel with four ohms. So when I perform the source transformation, I have a voltage source in series with a resistor. The resistor is still four ohms and the value of the voltage source is two times four or eight volts. Recall that source transformations are valid for independent and dependent sources and we will see some examples of that. Since we're discussing circuit simplification techniques, there's one more that we should talk about because we will need this when we start using source transformations to analyze circuits. One of them is based upon voltage sources in series. Voltage sources in series add algebraically. This is based upon KVL. So what that would mean for the following configuration is that if you have V1, V2, and V3, and V1 and V2 are positive on top, which are voltage rises, and V3 is negative on top, which is a voltage drop, then algebraically you can combine those to get a net voltage source V1 plus V2 minus V3. The other simplification technique is for current sources. Current sources in parallel also add algebraically. What this means is that if you have current sources I1, I2, and I3, and I1 and I3 go into the top node, and I2 comes out of the top node, then using KCL, I can write that as one current source equal to I1 minus I2 plus I3. Note that if the current sources are in parallel or the voltage sources are in series, this works. It does not matter whether there's another resistor in parallel with the current source or another volt resistor in series with the voltage sources. You can put them together. Okay, let's try an example. For the following circuit, use source transformations to simplify the circuit and find V0. Find the power developed by the 12 volt and 3 amp sources. Hence, simplify to one source and two resistors. Recall that if we're looking for V0, and V0 is the voltage across the 8 ohm resistor, I cannot include V0 in a source transformation or the 8 ohm in a source transformation. Once I do that, I lose my definition for V0. Once I do a source transformation with the 8 ohm resistor, the current through it and the voltage across it will change. We can work around eight, the 8 ohm resistor, but we can't include it. So first, on the left side of the circuit, I have a four ohm resistor in parallel with a three amp current source. I'm going to do a source transformation on these two. When I perform this source transformation, I'll have a 12 volt source with the positive on the bottom because the arrowhead points down in series with a four ohm resistor, which is in series with a two ohm resistor. So when I simplify the four ohm and the two ohm resistor, that's going to give me six ohms. So I'll copy down the rest of the circuit and then I'll change that to a six. So I have 12 volts in series with six ohms. And then I still have my eight ohm resistor. I still have V naught. I still have the three ohm resistor and a 12 volt source over here as well. So in the next step, I'm going to do it in two stages. What you'll see here is I can actually do a source transformation on the left and on the right. On the left side, I can do a transformation for the 12 volt and the six ohm. And on the right, I can do a source transformation for the 12 volt and the three ohm. So on the left side, I'll end up with 12 divided by six, a two amp current source, in parallel with a six ohm resistor. 
On the right side, 12 divided by three, I end up with a four amp current source in parallel with a three ohm resistor. And in the middle, I still have the eight ohm resistor because remember, I'm not going to do any transformations on the eight ohm resistor. So now, this looks like one of our special cases. I have resistors in parallel and I have current sources in parallel. So the two current sources add algebraically. So I have four amps into the top node and two amps out of the top node. That gives me a net two amps into the top node. I can also combine the six ohm and the three ohm resistor. Six in parallel with three, which is the product over the sum, 18 over nine, gives me a two ohm resistor. And then over here on the right, I still have the eight ohm resistor. So as the hint implied, we've now simplified our circuit down to one source and two resistors. It doesn't matter whether I do a current source in parallel with two resistors, or I could do a voltage source in series with two resistors. Since I'm actually looking for a voltage and I want to do the voltage divider, I'm going to do one more source transformation and write this as a voltage source in series with two resistors. Two times two gives me a four volt source and then I copy down my two ohm resistor. So V naught would be equal to eight over 10 times four. That's the voltage divider. So V naught is 3.2 volts. So now we're gonna try a technique called walking through the circuit in order to find the power developed by the two sources. So first I'll label the ground at the bottom of the circuit. And the value we found before was 3.2 volts. So what that means is that the voltage at this node is 3.2 volts. So when we walk through the circuit, we use KVL, KCL, and Ohm's law in order to find the values that we're looking for. So in this case, if I know this node is 3.2 volts, and I know that this node is 12 volts, what would be the current through the three ohm resistor? Well, current flows from higher potential to lower potential to obey the passive sign convention. So the current obviously points from right to left. And that current for the three ohm resistor would be 12 minus 3.2 divided by three, which equals 2.93 amps. So now I have the current through that resistor, which means I have the power for the 12 volt source. The power for the 12 volt source would be 12 times 2.93 or 35.2 watts delivered. So now we need to find the voltage for the three amp current source and we'll continue walking through the circuit to do that. Next, I'm going to find the current through the eight ohm resistor. The current through the eight ohm resistor should be 3.2 divided by eight. So the current for the eight ohm resistor is 3.2 divided by eight, which is 0 0.4 amps. So now I can use KCL to find the current for the two ohm resistor. If I have 2.93 amps coming in and 0 0.4 amps going out, then I need 2.53 more amps to go out of that node. So now the voltage for the two ohm resistor would be equal to two times 2.53, which is equal to 5.06 volts. So now I can use KVL to find the voltage across the three amp current source. If I have three volts rise and a 5.06 volt drop, then in order to obey KVL, that middle loop has to have negative 1.86 volts at this node. Another way of stating that is negative on top, positive on the bottom, 1.86 volts. So now that I have the voltage, I can find the power for the three amp current source. It's three times 1.86, which is equal to 5.6 watts 
delivered. This concludes our first source transformation example. Okay, now let's try an example that has a dependent source. For the following circuit, we're going to use source transformations to find IX. So recall the first thing is, if I wanna find IX, I cannot do any source transformations that involve the 10 ohm resistor because once I do that, I lose my definition for IX. So that only gives me one choice for my source transformation. And that would be to transform that dependent source in series with the five ohm resistor. So the first thing I'll do is copy down the 10 ohm resistor in IX. And then when I do the transformation over here, I end up with a five ohm resistor in parallel with a dependent current source. If I transform a dependent source, it remains a dependent source. So the transformation is voltage divided by resistance. So this becomes a current source with the arrowhead pointing down. That's two over five IX. So now I have a single node pair circuit or everything's in parallel. I can combine my two current sources, but that's it. I can't do anything with the resistors. Now, since I'm combining an independent and a dependent current source, the result is a dependent current source. So if I assume to look at the top node, I have four amps going into the top node and two over five IX coming out of the top node. So this becomes a net four minus two over five IX for that top node. Then I copy down the five ohm resistor again and the 10 ohm resistor again. Notice it does not matter whether the 10 ohm or the five ohm comes first. So I now have a circuit with one source and two resistors. I could use this in order to solve for IX or just like before, I could do one more source transformation and write this as a voltage source in series with a five ohm resistor and a 10 ohm resistor. And I could use this circuit to find IX. When I do that, my source becomes five times four, which is 20 minus two fifths times five, two, IX. So I'm going to use the bottom circuit and it's Ohm's law or KVL. IX, the current in that loop is equal to the voltage source 20 minus 2 IX divided by the sum of the resistors, which is 15. So this equation gives me IX is equal to 20 over 17 amps. And this concludes an example of showing how to use source transformations to solve for a value in a circuit with a dependent source. So now let's try an example that involves dummy resistors. So here we have a circuit and we wanna find the power delivered to the three ohm resistor. But before we do that, we're gonna actually simplify the circuit. However, I will not touch the three ohm resistor when I do this. So the first thing, let's identify our dummy resistors. There's actually two. So the 24 volt source has a 10 ohm resistor in parallel with it. That would be my first dummy resistor, which we'll call RD. And the three amp current source has a five ohm resistor in parallel with it. That would be my second dummy resistor, which we'll also call RD. So the first thing I'm going to do is to redraw the circuit and remove the dummy resistors because remember those do not affect the source transformations. Now, if I was actually going to analyze this complete circuit, those values will change the power delivered by the sources because less resistors, less power delivered. But for what we're doing with the three ohm resistor, it should be okay. So here's my new circuit with the dummy resistors removed. I now have a 24 volt source in series with a 12 ohm resistor in parallel with a four ohm resistor, a three ohm resistor, and a three amp current source. So I am going to do a source transformation on the left half of this circuit. The 24 volts in series with the 12 ohms is going to become 24 divided by two, 12, which is two amps in parallel with 12 ohms. Everything else in the circuit, I'm going to copy down. So I'll have four ohms, 
three ohms and three amps. I'm going to combine the 12 ohm and four ohm resistor and the two amp and three amp current source. Since I have two amps going into the top node and three amps coming out of the top node, that gives me a net one amps pointing down. 12 in parallel with four, product over the sum, 12 times four over 12 plus four is three ohms. And then I have the three ohm resistor that was there originally. And I can actually stop here to answer the question. So since I have two three ohm resistors, I know that the current through each of those resistors should be half of the original current, so it's 0 0.5 amps. And the power delivered to the second three ohm resistor should be equal to I squared R or 0 0.5 squared times three, which is equal to 750 milliwatts. And this concludes our example of doing source transformations using dummy resistors.